energy has the potential to flow. And not only that, we know that energy flows through our bodies because we have a, well, we have a salt number. 6 to 7 C. That salt number, the C is, stands for conductivity. What for? What for? Why do we have a conductivity number? Because your body is electrical. That's right. It's a chemical and electrical thing. If you were to take two cables, bare copper cables, and put them far enough apart, I mean, don't put them right together, but put them in a, in a fish tank full of distilled water, what's going to happen? Nothing. That's right. Nothing is going to happen. I'm not going to do it, but nothing is going to happen. Now, what's that? No minerals. Yeah, yeah, there was nothing to conduct any electricity. But add a, a teaspoon of, of uh, salt in there. And you're going to get some spark. You're going to get some current. Okay? Does that make sense? Current flows. That's our salt number. And how fast that current is flowing, or how fast it's able to get where we're where we're wanting it to go, is is going to be determined upon this. Uh, it's an energy number, but and that's why it's part of the first half. But what happens if that number is too low? Yeah, there's not going to be enough. Um, uh, for, for energy to flow from point A to point B. I really switch the light goes out. Yeah, you don't have the energy. What happens if this? What happens if this number is really high? Burn out the filament in the bulb. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Um, I don't know if this exists anymore, but back, you know, uh, even 20, 30 years ago, we have. I think it's still there, but. There was a cable that ran from uh, basically the upper states to England, transatlantic cable. And every so often, I don't know the time frame, but they would have to replace it. Why? Because the salt Yeah, the salt corroded the um, cables. Yeah, the cables. So, so they had to pull it up and redo it. If the salts are too high, What's the main uh, source in which the electricity flows to the body? The heart? Well, the, through the nerves. The nerves. Yeah. Spinal cord. Come on. <laughs> so if, if these are impeded, then we had trouble. And I showed you that little picture uh, of, of the sodium and potassium pump. Do you remember that? Okay, well, in, in the, uh, I don't want to waste too much time on this here. Here it is. The, um, now there, this is one nerve, but in a, in a lot of ways, these nerves are all bundled together in, in large bundles, okay? And they are insulated in between. They have the ability to send different signals to different parts of the body without being shorted out. But, there is a sheath, a fatty acid based sheath, that covers the nerves. Just like the uh, rubber coating on a cable. And if the salts are too high, what's it going to do to the coating? Short out. Out. It's going to short it out, it's going to pit it out. And so energy that is supposed to go from point A to point B, let's say, isn't going to work. Sugar makes Kids in school hyper. Yeah, different principle though. Okay. Different principle. This is energy being shorted out, and we see that um, you you might test somebody that has uh, very very high salt numbers, 50, 60, 70. They're really set in the say, stage. Thank you. Really set in the stage for something like uh, Parkinson's. Yeah. You get it. The other thing is is. Um, the, the material, the fatty acids that make up that sheath, need to be replaced. So it's, it's two things there that are very important. And, and some of those uh, catalysts or enzymes, the B vitamins, those are necessary to keep it healthy too. But these all play together. We see this in this number. But now, if there is not a lot of uh, mineral content or... Uh, 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 Mass, actual mass. Uh, did I finish my, my explanation on those carrots? The mm -hmm. juice, 
I think I think I forgot. I just said that the carrots were 19 bricks and the others weren't. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, a friend in Washington had uh, carrots that, when you bag up uh, a bag of organic carrots, uh, the bag, 25 pound bag, was about like yay, you know, yay, yay tall. And from this farm where they were growing using biological methods, the uh, same 25 pound bag was only about this tall. Now, the bricks really wasn't much higher, which is strange, but mass was different. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? Which one had more mineral ash? The one that took up less space. Well, it's going to be the same way within the body as well. And the more minerals that are in there, the more mineral content that's in there, the more uh, potential there is for energy to flow. Does that make sense? More metal, essentially, you got more copper wire in you. And then, depending on how much conductivity the body has. But those are two things that go together in, in establishing energy as well. Like attracts like. So if our, if our reserve is built up, then we get, if, if our potential is where it should be, then our bonus is great too. Does that make sense? Just like we did with the soil, we get that extra for free. Like if our potential is at 4%, then we're only going to get 20% overall. If our potential is at 20%, we're going to get 100% overall. Make sense? Okay. Uh, were we talking about walking in the grass with your shoes off? Who is that? That was, that was Mary Beth? I want to call you Beth. It's okay. Okay. Um, but if you walk, if, if person A who had a 4% walked in the grass, we're talking about um, in the Earth's crust, if you, anybody uh, learns about Tesla, Tesla was doing experiments in which he was actually making light bulbs that work off of the energy. Uh, the Earth's electromagnetic field runs north to south. That's ultimately what Reams was working with too uh, in the idea of ergs. He was trying to raise the uh, electric potential in an area by increasing the, uh, well, mineral reserve or, anyway. Tesla actually figured out what uh, frequency, I think it's like 8 hertz or... Yes, 8.5. Okay, it's a very uh, low number, but he built light bulbs that he could actually just put into the ground and they would light up. Isn't that crazy? Cool. <laughs> Yeah, but it's free energy. And, and that's ultimately, like, Tesla was, was into this idea of, like, we have radios, you know, today. Those, you know, they, they, they say, uh, they don't credit Tesla with that because Tesla's invention was, was not for broadcasting signal, but energy, power. You know, uh, no telephone or um, power lines in his mind. Mm -hmm. Just walk, you know, just uh, through the air. But people didn't like that because anybody could have a box, and how would you meter it? Mm -hmm. But that's what the potential was. Is that this stuff could be run, and he knew there was energy uh, everywhere that could be tapped into. The person that has a greater um, uh, um, metallic potential, uh, the ability to conduct more electricity. When they go outside and they're in this area, who's going to pick up more actual energy? Our person with, you know, overall uh, the, the, the peak reserve or the person with no reserve? And that's part of the thing you're going to see when you're working with people, like, like getting back into the Rife technology. Somebody who is very far at the end spectrum, their body may actually act more as an insulator than a conductor. Because there's no mineral in it to conduct the electricity. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And that's why the most critical thing, when you're looking at the overall Reams test, is when you see the low salt numbers, you know, one, two, three, and low uh, nitrate numbers, that person's near death. Those are two of the most critical things. Anyway, do you guys get the idea of the energy potential in that? I'm sorry if it doesn't come off as clear as I'd like, but if there's any questions on it.
low, low, you said when you're near death, they have the low salts and the low nitrate number? Low, low ureas. Ureas, okay. All right. Well, how about the high one? Uh, no, that that wouldn't play out the same way. A high high urea number is not good, you know, like a 20, 25, you know, those are, those are not good. But uh, it's more critical when they drop the other way. Just like when you're looking at the range chart, even a very high uh, nitrate or, or, or urea number altogether is still at the top end of a C range. But a low one, Light here it says that a 1 is an E. Anything below a 3 is basically on the, on the very end. And that's what you're looking at when you're, when you're seeing multiple things that are in that E range. Uh, you're getting to the point where this idea in that spiral, to reverse the potential in that, is getting to the point where really the only thing that's going to change that is some sort of a miracle. Because their ability to pick up energy to begin to rebuild this is so low that it's you're still losing energy even with the tremendous amount of input. Does that make sense? Okay. I gave you a couple of different charts. I'm not going to go over the lemon water one. Okay? You all, you know, those that have the books and that, uh, I'm not going to go over that because you can just look at that. What book are you getting this from? Well, those that have it, it's the Bedeau, uh, the Bedeau book. So, lemon water I'm not going to mess with. If you have a question, you can ask. It's fine. Um, carbohydrates, did, did we need to finish anything up on this? You can look at these sheets. And if you have questions, you can ask later. But the calcium dose rate, we were talking about that last session as well and how to get the minerals back in. We talked about how to play against the acid or alkaline base that that person has and use a lot, using the corresponding minerals to go against it, right? One thing I want to make sure you understand that like in the case of somebody who's extremely acid and you might be using something like a calcium carbonate or a calcium hydroxide, those have very little potential for absorption. It's not necessarily their absorption that we're really working on. It's their ability to buffer the acid that we're trying most importantly to work against. Okay? The, the minerals will come in. Now, some of the question was, um, uh, let me erase. When you see somebody that the, um, the saliva pH might be uh, like, a, like a six, and the, um, sorry, the urine pH, I've always done that. The urine pH might be at a, you know, a six, and the saliva at, uh, urine, let's call it two, okay? This person's uh, in two different positions. You have the chart that says A, B, C, D, E, and all of that. Mm -hmm. And you can look and you can find, these are great cheat sheets, okay? Because you can find where each one of those uh, work out, right? So urine and saliva. Do all have a chart? What range is that urine in? So what we have here is a range that's like a C, D. Okay, it's a split. But what you get to see is on that uh, calcium sheet, the dose rate sheet. Okay, so this is a CD. Do you see anywhere on this sheet where it talks about a CD? Yeah, so, so down at the bottom we see the dosage rate in a situation like this is focusing primarily on the, um, most importantly on the uh, acid range. 